Randy, first off, let's start with the the mustache, man. Like, the where, the did, room. Where, where did that come from? Or where, how, you know, where? How did you think of this? Dude, it was like my girl. I was I had a, a girlfriend at that time, and we were in the middle of a fight. And then I was like, I was like, I'm just gonna fucking do something that's gonna look stupid. So I just started as a joke, man, just like as stubble. That was my first ever mustache. And I kept it for like two weeks, and then I was like, "Dude, this thing has some potential. We gotta run with it." And then uh, it just kept getting thicker and thicker. I was like, "Fuck it, I'm going undefeated with this thing." For <laughs> real, dude. It's like the first thing that pops into the mind is uh, the Malop- the Monopoly guy. Yeah, yeah. I get that uh, the WB Mason guy. Yeah. Uh, and I looked like one of those uh, the bare knuckle boxers. Yeah, like for sure. Uh... For real. You should get a yeah. shirt made with that, man. Just you, just like a picture of you with the mustache, everything. That would be a dope ass <laughs> shirt. <laughs> some merch yeah we'll get that after the fight <laughs> for sure man for sure man um now you're returning on october 1st it's been about 11 months between fights man that's a lot of time for you to just you know just be with yourself you know what i mean get out the public eye because you know when you're in that ufc machine you, everything's focused on you you know what i mean you win you lose it doesn't matter the people are on you criticizing you about this and that how did how was the last 11 months for you uh, i mean so <clears throat> In hindsight, it was definitely it was definitely what I needed. Um, it definitely, you know, if you asked me this question at the beginning of the year, my answer would have been, you know, I want to get, I want to fight ASAP, uh, and that was the plan. I thought I was going to be fighting in like March or something like that. Uh, so I've been in camp <clears throat> since like uh, end of January, beginning of February, something like that. Um, but dude, like it's it's it definitely sucked, right? It definitely sucked, but it, I needed it, man, because that that fight in uh, in back in December, that was like that was a terrible performance, like. I don't know where the fuck I was, man. Like, that was really, really bad. And I think I just needed it to, like, really sting and really needed it to, like, you know, really hurt and just kind of sit in, not my sorrows, but sit in the pain and get, like, get, you know, get this, like, have this shitty taste in my mouth and, and just really, like, use that as motivation to, you know, fuck this feeling. Like, this feeling sucks. I want to get the fuck, you know, I don't want to feel this anymore. Um, so now, you know, now we're getting to the point where, you know, it's almost time to, like, go get this nasty-ass taste out of my mouth. And it's just... It's just nice, man. Like the 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 long layoff uh, sucked for a lot of things, uh, but it was great for a lot of things as well. Like it's it's really good for like my mental and, and figuring out and, and really like emphasizing what's important to me and what I need to do to get back in the winning column. And I think I did all those things, man. And I'm confident going into uh, next Saturday's fight. You uh you know you seem like a a happy go lucky guy, man. You don't seem like a guy that's like negative towards too many things so having that that um it could be anger right like building up in you and building up in you did you kind of need that uh yeah man but it's not even like necessarily like anger right because i'm not like i'm not angry right i'm not mad right i'm more like like uh like disappointed in myself for what happened and like just so envious of all the things that i, I can and i'm able to do it and, and all the potential that I, that I do believe that i have and it's just like it just it just kind of like like really put things in perspective and really made me like take a step back all right dude like you know you you're you're facing a position right now where like you really can't afford another loss you're being you know granted another opportunity now you have to go take advantage of that thing and now you have to go do it uh you know dealing with all the like the emotions and stuff that does that does you no good right emotions are just that they're just emotions they're not going to change shit right so it, it it was very important for me to like separate the emotions from like the the thinking with logic and, and, and doing what I need to do to get to where I need to be. And I think I, I, I really and truly think I've done that. I, I did, uh, I dove a lot, I, I dove very deep into myself over these last 10 months, man. I think I'm, I, I can, I can with confidence say that this is the best spot that I've been mentally going to fight. Like no question. I'm so dialed in and focused, man. Um, I think I turned a corner and I'm, I'm just excited to see how it all plays out next, next, uh, next Saturday night. Yeah. That's great to hear, man. It shows your evolution. Cause you're still a young dude. You don't even like have that many fights to be honest. Most of your career has been with the UFC. Bro. Most of my, more than half of my career is in the UFC, bro. I've had five UFC fights. I had four fights before I got to UFC. Like that's fucking nothing. And I only had three amateur fights. You know, I, I, I'm literally learning on the job. I have, I'm green in the game. And I think that I, like I've shown like, <clears throat> You know, like with my inexperience, I think that I've shown that my I still do have a pretty high ceiling. Like I've shown that I can I can hang with these guys. You know, I had a great fight with Adrian. Yan. I lost the fight, but I had a great fight with Adrian Yanez, who's the number 14 ranked guy right now. You know, like I'm fucking right there, dude. Like I know I'm only a couple wins away from doing that again, um, or from being back in, in a position like that. You no, know, so that's where it's like 
particularly important that I can't be so engulfed in like all the bullshit people are saying, all like the negative emotions, like none of that's going to do me any good. I know what I need to do. I'm going to go and do it. And then, then that's, that's really it, man. That's really it. Yeah. The, the Adrian Giannis fight to me, it was like heading into it. It was a coin flip because you guys are both devastating strikers. And when you started piecing him up in the first round, I was just like, this thing is over, man. Like it's not even going to go into the second round. What do you think? went wrong like i don't know if it's saying went wrong but what do you think you could have done to finish him you know what i mean yeah so like i think with that fight in particular you could definitely see the experience discrepancy i don't think you could see a like, like a clear skill discrepancy between either of us what he did really really fucking well that i did really really not well was he adapted to the fight i didn't adapt to the fight uh and then i think that just shows like that that the caliber and the experience that he has that I that I don't have. He was a, a better fighter that night, a better man that night, one thousand percent. But I think skill for skill, I think I can go with any of these guys. I think I, I just I definitely wasn't in over my head, but I was definitely, you know, deep enough into the fight where the experience was gonna play factor. And he just did a fucking phenomenal job at adapting to the fight and then and like kind of taking me out of my rhythm, which is when he was able to capitalize. Um, had I had more experience or had I been, you know, been more developed, maybe I would have been able to, you know, kind of nullify those things. But that's then that's, you know, that's over with. That was a that was a fucking great fight. That was an awesome fight. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm super fucking happy to have had that experience. And and, um, and it's really cool to see all the all the great things that Adrian's doing now. Let's talk about your next opponent, man. Guido uh, Canetti, another action pack matchup, man. They only give you action pack, you know, fights. What's the first thing that pops into your mind when, you know, you hear that name? I'm going to win, man. That's it. I'm going to fucking win. Um, I'm familiar with Guido. Um, you know, Chris Moutinho is a friend of mine from Massachusetts. We've trained together for a long, long time. And obviously Guido's coming off a great win over Chris Moutinho. Um, yeah, man, I just, I'm familiar with Guido. Uh, that's a fight that I figured would have happened uh, or will happen in my career. Only because <clears throat> he's an older guy with a, with a um, maybe a not so great record uh, and not many fights. And I'm a guy... Uh, who's younger with not many fights, who maybe has uh, maybe has some potential. So uh, you typically see those guys kind of going with each other, and I think that this fight makes sense right now. And I, I just I just think that I I don't know, man. I just think that I'm so much better than him. I just think that I'm, I'm trickier than him. I think I'm um, more technically sound. I have way more weapons. Um, but boy, can fucking punch, man. He can hit. He can knock people out. He's tough. He's He's a gamer. He's an he's an Argentinian street fighter, man. He's fucking tough. Uh, you got to give respect where it's due, and I, I 1,000 percent respect his skill set. But I, I'm coming in there to win, man. I'm coming in there to put his lights out. Um, I'm aware of the threats, but I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna nullify them. I'm very confident in my preparation and the things that I've done over these last fucking 10 months, and just being pissed off at myself. And, and I don't even see Guido, man. I just see a guy that I'm going that I'm just gonna fucking wax. Yeah, let's talk about the training in the last 10 months. You know, did you go back to? the Northeast and train a little bit up there or you've been in Florida the whole time. Yeah, I've been in Florida, man. And, and, uh, so from January to March, the only things that I, that I, that I trained, I didn't do it like MMA stuff. I was doing straight boxing sparring and a fucking ton of jujitsu. Uh, and I think th both of those things are, are, uh, are two of the things that have uh, been kind of neglected into my game and, and kind of, uh, uh, put a detriment on my performances. Uh, I think that, if you've if you've watched my last fight and how Adrian fought me, he kind of you know had that Mexican style boxing where you're just walking forward, you're gonna kind of absorb damage, and you're gonna stay in his face, and that's that's the style that gave me a lot of problems. So I stepped outside of my comfort zone and I chased that style, and, and I've, I've just been doing a fuck ton of those kind of uh, those kind of rounds with bigger guys and, and just gotta have guys that kind of bully me around the ring, um, and I don't think that that. Guido's, I'm not going to allow Guido to do that. I'm familiar with that. I know how to deal with that now. Um, but yeah, man, I'm still out here in South Florida. Still out here happy in South Florida uh, by the beach for sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, man, I just kind of took a, a much more individualized approach to this fight camp. Um, I feel like I have a lot of things, a lot of different uh, training outlets that are all geared to uh, what I need to do. So I definitely took more of an individual approach uh, instead of like a big camp approach. And I I think that's going to pay dividends on uh, October 1st. Yeah, South Florida is probably one of the best places to live in the U.S. I'm going to say it because I lived there in 99, and, man, it was awesome. Oh, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Especially now, man, with, with like, the the, the divisive and parties, and, and it's just this is where you want to be, man, if you want to, if you want to be free. <laughs> yeah, and hella, hella, like, crazy training out there. You said you, you were on doing jiu-jitsu and boxing, but you have crazy kicks, man. Like, 
you know, did you work on like karate or anything else besides the boxing? We're fucking lacing head kicks next week. <laughs> I'm fucking lacing them. And then that's every fight, bro. I mean, that's this is what I do. That was like yeah. my first. That was like the first martial art that I got into. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I think that over uh, over my career, I kind of used my my kicks to set up my punches. And I think now that I, I I've evolved much more than I'm yet now using my punches to set up my kicks. So I think that while I was I was having like a high percentage of kick volume, I may not have uh, necessarily like high. Uh, I wasn't connecting with a lot of them, and I think now. That I may not throw as many high kicks, but I think that when I throw them, they're gonna fucking sting. And I think that, I think that I have a good opponent to be to be chasing these yeah. chasing cool kicks. Yeah. So, like, when did you actually just get down into camp? You say you've been trained the whole time, but you know, when you get into a camp, it's a little bit different. Bro, like, I I thought I was fighting in fucking March, dude. So I've been I was in camp from like the middle of middle of January, beginning of February until late March. And then I didn't get that. I didn't get a fight. So then I went, I went, uh, I went scuba diving for a week, uh, came back and I was like, Oh fuck, dude, that's cool. I'm going to fight in July. No problem. Got back in camp, got back trained, didn't get a fight in July, went scuba diving for another week. And then, oh, that was in June. And then, uh, like my last day on that scuba diving trip, I got news that, uh, I got the contract in my email. Uh, so I've had 16 weeks or something like that to prepare, for, to prepare for this fight. So if you look at like the last what forty weeks of the of this year or whatever it is, man, I've been in in camp or so I thought for like fucking twenty eight of them or something like that, man. So I've just been, I've been grinding, man. I've been uh, within striking distance of making weight pretty much the entire year. Uh, everything's just, dude. Everything has been gone like fucking money. We didn't cut any corners, man. This is like a, a, a ten month camp, and I know that going into this fight, win or lose, like I really did everything that I needed to do, and then. I can only can control what I can control, and I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna fucking try to knock this dude out. There's a, I think there's a, a big sense of like confidence in that yeah. what you just said. You know what I mean? Of like no stone unturned, like win or lose, I know that I prepared my best, man. And that's a dangerous fighter right there. For sure, man. For sure. Like I'm, I'm just, I feel like in in the, in the past, <clears throat> um. Going into fights, I wasn't not not that I was like um like over respectful or anything like that. Like I'm very cordial with, with everybody, but I think that I like I wasn't focused on the task at hand. Like I'm I'm my my focus like I'll shake his hand, I'll do this stuff and the other thing, but I'm I'm going there to fuck this dude up. I'm not going there to fucking do the social media. I'm not going there to do this stuff the other thing. I'm going there to fucking fight, dude. And if you look at my social media or anything like that, I have I've been pretty much ghost off social media this entire camp. You know, for the last six weeks, something like that. In the past, dude, like oh, I'm fucking, you know, blasting stuff on social media. I'm just, dude, I need to fucking win. Like that's that's the number one priority. Everything gets better with a win. Everything gets everything everything that I love right now gets you know gets emphasized with a win. And uh, that that's what I need to do, man. So I, I'm just fucking so focused on uh, on October first and and putting my fist through uh, Guido's head. That's it, man. That's it. Do you have a vision of like what you want to display in this fight? Uh, what I want to display, I just want to like kind of show like all the things that I've been working. I think that, I think that we're gonna see. I think that I'm gonna see like one of those growths that I've had that I had between like my first UFC fight, my second UFC fight, my third UFC fight. You know, between my first and second, there was a massive clear growth. Between my second and third, there was a clear massive growth. Uh, and then I just kind of got into a rut. Uh, I had some people around me that I probably shouldn't have had around me. I was listening to people. That I probably shouldn't have been listening to, uh, and I think that that now is just I, I just I think everything's just developed right, and I think that you're gonna see like an, an evolved, uh, an evolved version, a much tighter and cleaner version um, of all the 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 flashy techniques that I do. Like those things aren't going away, but I think that everything's gonna be a lot more dialed in this time. Man, man, are you already exciting? But man, talking to you like give me goosebumps, dude. About yeah, this fight. Bro, I'm fucking ready to rock. <laughs> yeah. <ready> rock. <laughs> October first, man. You'll see Fight Night Las Vegas, man. Randy, appreciate the time and uh, yeah, man. People need to tune into this fight. It's like either performance of the night or fight of the night. Is one of those is gonna happen. Someone's getting slept. Bro. Yeah. That's right.